Hey guys, Raz is here with a new video this week, and this week we're looking at an excerpt from a coaching session I had a little while ago that went a little bit in-depth into mentality, and I think a lot of people could make use of this information. Uh, so enjoy the video if you want to see me live, the link is down below in the description. I do stream on Twitch up to four days a week, and if you want to get notifications, you can either follow over there or join the Discord or even follow on Twitter. All the links in the description down below. Guys, enjoy the video. Rams is out. Anything else you feel like you are doing wrong that you know about? Yeah, I I say this a lot on Twitter. I think uh, I'm just really losing focus when I'm nervous. I notice when I'm nervous during, uh, during tournaments and all that, I just lose almost all game sense and I, I notice, yeah, that this isn't uh, working out at all. But yeah, what so, to do about nervousness? Yeah, so we can talk about that because a yeah. lot of people suffer from nervousness and it's a very common issue. Um, so when you are in a tournament set, um, what does your nervousness do to you? You say you lose game sense, does that mean that your mind goes blank or does your mind get filled up with uh, irrelevant thoughts or like insecurity, like I cannot win, I don't know if I'm good enough, uh, etc, etc. I think, what the most, I think the most prevalent is um, I know I can do way better than this, but why um, isn't it like that now? Okay, so basically you get filled up with insecurity in a way, right? Yeah. Okay, Whew. Um. let's see. I know I can do better. Why can I not? Oh, that is a rough expression of nervousness to deal with. When I look back at some sets I've played, I notice, oh yeah, this was going really well. And then at um, other matches where I was really nervous, I think like, oh man, is this really how it's going right now? Because I was playing so well back then. So, have you ever heard me talk about System 1 and System 2 before? Not that I remember. Okay, so let's talk about that real quick, because this is important to understanding um, your self-talk, because this is this is self-talk. Uh, and self-talk is like a common topic in sports psychology. Um, I don't know if you ever heard about The Inner Game of Tennis. It's a book, and it talks a lot about like self-talk. So basically, if you're interested in this topic, then this could do a lot for you. And if self-talk is a thing that you struggle with, then this book can really help you out. The Inner Game of Tennis. I'll write it down so you can look it up later if you want to. So your brain has two ways of thinking about the, or thinking in general, it has two modes of thinking. We call them system one and system two. So system one is fast and inaccurate. If I ask you what's two plus two? Four. Yeah, did you need to think about that? Nope. Of course not, that's system one. System two is the opposite, it's slow and deliberate. Or and accurate, I should say. So, if I ask you what's uh, 52 times 165? You're gonna have to think about it, right? Um, oh, I do remember now, you actually talked about this. Yeah, Okay. I remember, okay. yep. So, the reason why your form of nervousness is more extreme than the average nervousness is because this type of self-talk occupies your system to thinking. When you are doing this, you are basically blocking your own capability of deliberate thought, okay? So I want you to understand that. This is called Inform information synchronization. So basically, how well can you communicate in your own brain, right? How well can you use your system one to deliver information to system two? And how well can system two then adjust how your system one is working? It's information synchronization. This is what gets messed up by your self-talk, by your insecurity. So how do we fix this? There are multiple ways to tackle nervousness and because like, psychology is such a personal thing. 
I cannot, cannot give you like a, an end all be all solution, but I can give you some suggestions. One thing to do, or well, actually, before we get into that, can I ask you a question? Yes. What is your goal with Smash? I want, um, I want to keep, uh, I want to, um, you can say exceed, this, you can exceed say my okay. limits. Exceed your limits. I want to exceed my limits. If you don't know a word, you can say it in Dutch and we'll go from there. Don't worry about it. So when you are in tournament, why do you get nervous? Because I understand that when you're not doing, when you feel like you're not doing well, uh, you're not exceeding your limits. But to me, that nervousness points towards another goal. Something along the lines of, I want to prove that I am a good player. Or I want to show how much I've grown. You know, stuff like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you get nervous, it's because you feel like you cannot perform. Why do you want to perform? It is um, so I can um, you know, re, re, um, reassure myself that I'm um, that I've grown as player. You want to prove to yourself that you've grown. Yeah. Why does that need to happen in tournaments? No, that's a good one. I mean, you got the answer. I'm just asking questions here. Ramses, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's no, totally that's fine. A... That is totally no. fine. No, it's it's weird, man. It I can I can't give an answer, but it's it's just there. It's really weird. Yeah. So what I think um, is you've started to pressure yourself. Okay. So. Yep. This type of expectation that you've put up on yourself is a result of all your training. So when someone spends a lot of time training, for example, in Smash, what happens is that they, they want to see the fruits of that training. And there's only so much that you can get out of reassuring yourself. There's only so much you can get out of seeing yourself improve and saying, Yes, I've been proven. There, we're social. We're social beings. We want someone else to say, "Hey, man, you've gotten a lot better." And what better opportunity is there than the mecca of the gamers, the the tournament bracket, the yeah. the one place where 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 dreams go to die, where love is lost, where only one person goes home happy at the end of the day. That's number one. You've built up expectations of yourself. That's what it sounds like to me. So in other words, it's not, I want to prove my, to myself that I've grown. It's I've grown and I want to prove it, it to others. I mean, that is your goal. Yeah, exactly. I've, it's, it's so unfortunate. There are almost no offline tournaments mm -hmm. because yeah, I mean, you can type to each other like, oh man, uh, you played really well this match. But there's no personal feeling to that. You yeah. want to see you want to see other people. I've I've only been to um, an offline tournament once. It was um, and I wasn't even playing then. Mm -hmm. I really hope they return soon. So I'll be the first to tell you this is not a healthy goal to have. Um, healthy goals are goals that you can measure by yourself, right? You cannot rely on someone else to give you that approval, you know, like be, because what, what do other people know? Right? Do they know about the, the literal hours you spend every day playing quick play? About the, 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 the hours that you spend thinking 
about all of the things that you could be doing better, about the hours that you spend thinking, okay, so what other play styles can I try out? About the pain of trying to improve and not seeing that happen in game. What do people know about your fucking journey? They know nothing, dude. Only you can judge yourself. And that's not a smash thing, that's a life thing, right? You know what you've been through. I can only guess, but based on what you told me, you spend a lot of effort. And I respect that, dude. And like, I don't know how good you are, but I'm proud of you regardless, because it takes, it takes a lot to give so much of yourself to a passion like this. And I've been there, like, like I'm, I'm there with you. And my entire chat is there with you. But still, we don't know. We don't know what you've been through. We don't know what you what your journey has been. So you got nothing to prove. And I know that you want people to say, dude, you're you're so good. And I know that you want to make the PR. And I know that you want to beat Mr. R. And I know that you want to beat Space. Because I've been there. But my journey is not your journey. And at the end of the day, me saying, dude, you're so good, it doesn't mean shit, honestly. Um, and I like, let me say it's easier said than done. I, it's very easy for me to say all this, but it's a lot easier for you to feel it. But you should. Man. <laughs> it's okay. But, uh, no, it's... Um... Yeah, it's true. It's it's true, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> you don't have to say anything. Let's look. Let's look productively. Okay. So let's look at yeah. what we can do instead. Then. So what are some good goals to have? Well, I want to exceed my limits. That's a good goal to have. Why? Because you are the one who defines your limits. You are the one who can tell you what to do better. Right. Some other good goals to have are stuff like okay. So here here are some like sub goals I, I guess so for example at the end of the month i want to i want to parry prom nair consistently right so that's a good goal because you can test this in your games and you can see exactly what's happening and if you made it then you've made it right uh at the next tournament i want to not get upset when i lose and then when you do lose and you do get upset, you review. Why did I get upset? What happened? You know, how can I how can I turn this into positive energy? And of course, something that as one told me that I think is very important is that there's there's one reason why we all started playing Smash. Because it's fun. The game is fun. I like playing Smash. I like seeing if I can, you know, if, if I can mentally outperform my adversary. So at the end of the day, your goal is I want to have fun. I want to learn something new, right? These are, these are good goals. This is what you can base your journey around. Something like the more complex your journey get, gets, the more simple and solid your base motivation should be right because that makes it a lot easier to fall back on because falling back on you know i want to exceed my limits well what are your limits how do you exceed them i don't know i think it's a good like i said it's a good um mindset to have like it's it's, it's good to focus on your improvements but there's a lot of other ways to define your improvement which could be things like this right so uh, and as always, right? Because at the end of the day, like, I want to be the best, right? Everyone wants to be the best. But do I play because I want to be the best? No, you don't play because you want to be the best. I can tell you that. Because if you did, then you would be playing Joker or Pikachu or Politena. But you're playing DDD. 
What does that tell me? That you want to have fun. Why do you play DDD? Probably because he's your favorite character to play, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> he's not he's not the best character in the game. Like I won't lie to you about that. Um No, no, that's just true. Yeah, so so you want to have fun. But you want to, you know, you want to improve too. Alright, so how how do you consistently improve? And why do you need tournaments to to you know prove yourself in that regard, right? So yeah. That's that's the mental aspect. Let's kind of talk about like concrete ways that you can solve your nervousness, okay? Um yep. So one thing that I really like to do is meditation. Um do you have do you feel like you have an active mind or do you feel like you have more of a calm mind? Uh, definitely active. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you the active form of of meditation. So what you want to do is you want to um seclude yourself to to minimize minimize thank you uh outside impulses and close your eyes right so you 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 put on your headphones you go away from where people are if you're at home you know just lie in bed close your eyes and let the thoughts flow for you right so let the thoughts come up uh, and follow the line of thought logically. So say you're lying on your bed or you're, you know, you're sitting in the bathroom at a to tournament, I don't care. Um, and you got your headphones up, you're closing your eyes, you're taking a shit, you're feeling, you're feeling in touch with nature as one should on the porcelain throne. Um, and then a thought comes up and it's, I want to prove myself. Then you ask yourself, okay, well, why do I want to prove myself? Because I feel like I'm really good and I want others to recognize that. Why do I think I'm good? Why do I want others to recognize me? Right? And you just keep asking yourself like, okay, so where do these feelings come from? What is at the core of this, this thought that just flares up, right? And you will notice that as you handle these thoughts, they will decrease in activity. So as you, as this thought comes up, like I want to prove myself and you follow it through to the logical conclusion, might take five minutes, might take 10 minutes, might take 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. Take the time, right? They will, they will go away because your brain has concluded the thought, right? It's, it's done. There's nothing more to think about. There's no reason to bring it up for your brain because your brain knows what it is. There's nothing more to kind of analyze. The nice side effect here is that not only will it reduce those thoughts, if they do come up again, which can happen, for example, during a game, if you're nervous, you can instantly bring up the conclusion that you figured out and that will soothe the thought as well. So if the first time, you know, you sat on, on the porcelain throne, you've figured out why you think, you know, why you want to prove yourself. And then during a game, it's like, oh man, I'm losing, but I really want to prove myself. And then you're like, oh, but I want to prove myself because of this. And that's because of that, blah, 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 done. And it's out of your brain. It's out of your system at that point. Um, and I, I hope that makes sense because that is exactly what will happen. I can, I can, I can, uh, I can promise you that. Does that sound like something you can do? Yeah, so um, to clarify, it's the thoughts that will um, come to you during a game. Um, you have to make sure you complete those thoughts outside of, uh, outside of a game. So you don't have to think about it while playing. Yeah, that's basically what it is. And if I can promise you, if you're at a tournament, then those thoughts that pop up mid game, they're just like more, you're feeling more stressed. So they feel different, but they're the same thoughts that happen while you're nervously waiting for your next match or while you're nervously traveling to the tournament. So during those moments, you can also handle those thoughts. And then when you're stressed in a game, it's easier to put them away. Okay. Yep. Here's another thing you can do. Um, so at its core, 
Um, this nervousness is a focus on either the past or the future. So, uh, nervousness is either a focus on the past slash a possible future. So, for example, would be uh, I shouldn't shouldn't have gotten hit hit by that that back air, or if I lose this. I'll I'll look stupid. I'll look bad, or I don't know. Like I should have played that situation better, or I don't know. Uh, I don't want to lose. I should win because I'm better, right? So all these thoughts are like you focusing on either the the past or the future. So I should have gotten hit by the back air. It's you focusing on the past. If I lose this, I'll look bad. It's focusing on the future. I should have played that situation better. It's focusing on the past. I don't want to lose. It's focusing on the future. And I should win because I'm better. You know, like... It, this also is like a focus on like a possible win. But when you're playing the game, it's not about winning or losing. When you're playing the game, it's about how do you win the next interaction at hand. So that is the next tip is if you find yourself thinking these type of thoughts, force yourself to think, how do I win the next interaction? So you focus yourself to think about the present instead of the future or the past. You're saying, okay, so how, what is at hand right now? It's the next interaction. What should I do to win this? All right. Yeah, um, because uh, you're right. Because yeah, what what positives does it have if you're going to think about the past or the future? Because yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it does affect your game, but it doesn't change the way how you're playing at that moment. Exactly. So it's better just to focus on the present than to think about those unnecessary things. Yeah, exactly. And here's the third and final tip. It's uh, improve. So this is a stupid tip, but I'll elaborate a little bit. So a lot of nervousness comes from um, a lack of information. So when you're in a certain situation, um, you don't know exactly what to expect, and that's gonna make you nervous, right? Yep. So by gaining a better knowledge base, is going to help you know what to expect, which will ease your nervousness. Because if you know exactly what all the outcomes are, there is nothing, like nothing unexpected that can happen, right? If we go back to like what we talked about in terms of game plan, like well-defined goals, I'm in the mid range, I'm playing versus Lucina, I'm DDD. Uh, I decided to go for like a, I don't know, a four tilt and instead they jumped over me and did a landing down air and then they up smashed me. There's nothing to be nervous about because you knew this could happen when you did the four tilt. It's just like, okay, well, I took the risk. I took the risk because I thought he was going to stay on the ground, but he didn't. I took the punish. It's the punish that I knew was on the, in the cards. The only thing I have to do is adjust how I play the mid range, because now I know he has this tendency to jump, uh, and I need to play around this so I can't afford tilt anymore. So it kind of turns. Well, let me put it in another way. You turn the game into a logical thing rather than an emotional thing. And the more logical the game is the lesser is to be nervous about. Like, would you get nervous about, about playing tic-tac-toe? Not really, because you know exactly what's gonna happen. Everyone who played tic-tac-toe for like five minutes knows how to turn every situation into a draw. So would there ever be a reason to be nervous? Of course not, because you know exactly what's going on. It's all a logical, rational process. So there's no room for you to get nervous. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think I get it. Yeah, it's a, 
So yeah, that's a way better thinking of what I am currently doing. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit different than usual, but I thought it was so interesting and it could really help out a lot of people in the scene. Guys, once again, if you enjoy the content, feel free to drop the subscription or check out the other social media down below in the description. I'll see you next week for the next video. Ramses out for real this time. Stay smart.